I call the next part the pressure cooker. Yeah. I'm going to ask you six fast, fun questions that yeah. listeners want to know your answers to. All right. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Number one, what would you consider your signature dish? What would I consider my signature dish? I think it has to be the dhansak. Yeah. It has to be. Because we have developed it well, we, we, we evolve with it ourselves. And because I get the most amazing lamb in Britain and mutton in Britain, it works extremely well. So, as the top seller and as a dish that has never died in its uh, excitement on the menu, I think that would be the signature dish. Great. Number two, is there a dish that you love but will never appear on any of your restaurant's menus? Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. There is one thing I love more than dhansa <laughs> is a very simple dal and rice which we cook at home. Right. Which is called moridar. And with that, we eat a little spicy prawn pickle kind of a thing called patia. And that is my all time favorite. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't feature on the menu as a regular, it features occasionally on the specials. Right. And there's no, the, the reason is not because I don't think we can make a good job of it. The reason is because I end up eating far too much lentil and then the after effects on me are terrible. Oh no. <laughs> so to keep away from eating too much of it, I don't put it on the menu. Right. right. So guests will have to look for it. Guests will have to look for it. Sometimes they ask. So when I do a special Parsi evening, I sometimes give on special occasions uh, Adhandar Patia. Wow. Wow. And that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And how often do you do these Parsi evenings at the restaurant? Uh, every every fifth Friday or every five weeks. So this, today is not a Friday, but today is the last one of the year. Okay. And we are fully booked. We have booked nearly 100 people. So it's going to drive me nuts. But <laughs> And lots of Parsi is coming today. So there'll be a lot of noise and <coughs> loud screaming in the restaurant. And the lots of whiskey flowing today. We are pairing it with whiskey. But we do it every fifth Friday. And it's called the Greedy Pigs Club, really. Right. Because as a people, we mock at ourselves all the time. And we, I think, I mean, the Parsi was born just to eat. Or he, he eats to live. He lives to eat. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, we, are known, we are known in Bombay uh, as to be real khadras in the sense that greedy. Right. <laughs> with our so we thought we'll have a little twist and call the dinners a greedy pig's evening. So are the, are the lentils on the menu tonight? There is no lentil on the menu tonight. <laughs> okay, no. chef. Chef, question number three. Yep. What is a professional chef tip that all home cooks should know? A professional chef tip that all home cooks must know. Invest in a good knife, number one, yeah. please. People tend to buy cheap knives from supermarkets which are not well tested. They look very great, but they don't buy good knives. They should invest in a very good knife because your knife is a direct link between you and the food you prepare. Right. <coughs> invest in everything good rather, but most carefully make sure your knife is well honed, well crafted, well kept, well maintained. Great. That's one of the key things. The other thing is that declutter your mind when you cook. Just declutter it. Everybody likes to cook from a recipe book and then they come and say the book's too difficult. That's because we take it too personally on board. So first of all, read a recipe as though you're reading a novel. And then forget about it. Put it away for a couple of hours. When you come back to it, the recipe literally just falls into pieces in your lap. And you find it much, much easier to tackle. Right. And right. you'll find many ways in which you can actually... Uh, overcome some of the things that you feared might happen when you start cooking with it. Right, right. So right. this, this, I mean, this is one of the key things is not to clutter your mind too much. Right. And right. mise en place, which of course is a French term, pre-preparation, very, very, very important. Everything to be prepped before you start cooking. Right. So that then you don't land yourself in a state of panic. Right, right. Yeah. The, the process just falls smoothly into place one by one right yeah i think i think a lot of times for home cooks we just you know rush too so it's it, it, everything is rushed yes. and we don't prepare ahead of time and that can lead to that's, some that's disasters. very important also it doesn't take that long to cook a fantastic meal 
Right. So long as in your mind you worked it out, what are the steps that you're going to take? Right. Right. Okay. Question number four. Besides yes. your own, which are some of your favorite restaurants in London? Oh, we have quite a few actually. We go to. We have a very we have a uh, Vietnamese restaurant pretty close to us called Green Papaya. Okay. We know the owners quite well now over the years. Of course, we become very friendly, and that's our favorite haunt because the food has never disappointed us. Then we have a couple of very fam uh, very uh, dear Chinese restaurants. One of them is at the Royal Garden Hotel now called Min Jiang. It's excellent. It's a uh, Chinese food with a Nonya influence. Oh, okay. So it's brilliant. Right. Of course, a friend of ours owns a chain of restaurants called Good Earth, which are fantastic. And then, of course, we'll eat Chinese, we'll eat French, we'll eat Italian. Anything new, we will go and try. So London's an exciting place today. London's got some of the best restaurants in the world. Yeah. And I think we have a great time when we go occasionally, or as often as we can, rather to try new places. But quite a few chefs know us anyway, so we try and book with them and go and then, you know have a great meal right. in another French restaurant. Right. No, it's funny that you mentioned the the Nonya restaurant because my my wife's family is from Singapore and my family is from Malaysia, and uh, Nonya food is uh, very close to uh, sort of our family's uh, traditions. Perfect. I mean, we were in uh, Kuala Lumpur. I was uh, hosting a conference there just last month. And the family we know, they took us to a Nonya restaurant there, which was fantastic. Yeah. And uh, the Royal Garden Hotel is owned by Singaporeans. Oh, okay. Naturally, naturally the restaurant should have a Nonya influence in it. Right. And absolutely. the food is just fabulous. Great. Well, well next time, fabulous. next time we're in London, I definitely uh, will make that suggestion to uh, to my wife. <laughs> you no, know, definitely. I'm sure she would like it. She'll pick a few faults in it, of course. <laughs> Like an Indian, you want to pick fault in food that comes to your community, but still, I think it's good food. Great. Now, question number five. Is yes. there a chef whose food you want to try but haven't yet had the chance? Yes. Michel Roux Jr. Oh, yeah. I haven't had a chance to go to the Gavroche yet after so many years. <laughs> I think it's a disgrace that we haven't been there yet. But uh, no, we have not had the privilege of eating the food cooked by the Rue brothers. Right, right. Great. And definitely want to go there, but still haven't made it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, the final question, number six. What are, your f what are your thoughts on food trucks? They've become very popular here in North America now, these food trucks. What are your thoughts on them? Well, I'll tell you what. We own a truck. Oh, do you? But ours is slightly different. It's a high-capacity, high-volume truck that we take to cricket matches and other events. And it can produce 2,000 meals a day. Wow. <laughs> Almost. It can reproduce. I mean, it, it has to be put in there first. But the new trend in Britain has also taken off. It, there's a, there's a, there's a not-for-profit organization called The Curb. Okay. And they are now growing very rapidly with small vans and small trucks serving food in different parts of the city. My only concern with that, my only concern with that, and I don't think it's a bad thing. Yes, it does damage the restaurant trade in the area because when the truck is parked nearby, the restaurant trade will suffer a bit because people want the food cheaper on the streets. But some of them, some of them, do not produce a great product and yet charge a lot of money for it. I see. So I think that the quality is something that the truckers always disregard. It's always disregarded because sometimes they have to sell at a very low profit margin and they, they, they always compensate quality for price. Right. And I think that is one of the things that I dislike about it. Though, having said that, there's so much vibrancy in those trucks. They bring such good menus forward. A lot of classical dishes coming out. A lot of uh, local foods that were hidden for years together. That suddenly appear in a, in a van. And I think people enjoy it most. People enjoy it most because it's at their doorstep. And uh, on their doorstep and hot and supposedly looking fresh. <laughs> supposedly looking fresh. Now, what's your food truck called, Chef? 
Well, ours is just branded Cafe Spice Namaste. Okay. And it is branded, but uh, ours uh, needs a lot of power to work because it needs to be at a pitch. Right. Right. But it's a great unit. It's a fabulous looking unit. It's uh, sexy, rather I would call it. <laughs> and it 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 works hard. Great. Fantastic. That's a little other wing of our business. Yeah. And, and did you start this a few years ago, or was it? Uh... We started it upon, upon the request from the MCC or the Lord's Cricket Ground. Oh, okay. They approached us to come and cater there. We had no idea what that business was about. So we hired a truck and went in for the first year and they said, if you want to come back here regularly, you need to invest in your own vehicle. And that's how, when we learned how expensive it was to put <laughs> money to a mobile unit. Right, right. Well, you have survived the pressure cooker chef.